So what we've got on are basically the same products. I have the R1 tech face and she has the R1 cross strata hoodie. And they really are kind of the same type of products. They're both soft shell fleeces that Patagonia makes. The only difference being that one's made in a women's style and one's made in the men's style. It's kind of like one of the weird things from Patagonia that has that differentiation between the two product lines. Mm-hmm. Which is kind of weird because these are the same jacket. They're both technically tech based jackets. Yeah. But they're just different. They're just like a little style difference and a slight performance details, I would say. Yeah. Ever so slightly. And like just even from like the features, like kind of go on and like list the features your jacket has. Yeah. I mean, obviously mine still has the pockets here that do have a different zipper. Uh, And then I also have the additional kind of phone pocket here along with the zipper pocket on the chest. Um, I also have an under the helmet hood on the cross strata here. And the cuffs are like elastic on the bottom and then the normal jacket R1 material on the top. Yeah, and it's kind of it's just interesting to see those I guess differences. Maybe main, mainly like the chest pocket area. I think it's kind of weird, and yeah. even <laughs> from when I saw it, it's like having that little button right there as like the closure on top. Mm-hmm. Like that's kind of weird. And, and it's so off center that it doesn't actually close, and there is still the kind of a gap here. Yeah, it's yeah. an interesting design. Um, it's a very interesting design, mm-hmm. but. Like, I'm kind of jealous of the little pocket that you get on top because I only have the one chest pocket. And it's kind of deep. And I think on the previous version of the R1 tech face, there was only an internal chest pocket. So now I have an external one. It's kind of nice. Mm-hmm. But I mean, my elastic sleeves are just like a little band of elastic. It's not like a whole like strip of elastic. Yeah. And then I do have a over the helmet hood, which helps for climbing. And that's, I think, kind of weird, too, is that these two pieces are kind of meant for climbing. They're not necessarily like, yeah, take on it. What would be functional for it? I feel like your version has a lot of the old kind of styling of the R1 tech face where it had the under the helmet style Mm -hmm. scuba hood. And I feel like the cuffs were a little bit more closer to what the previous version was, Mm -hmm. but it's also just got very random specific things that are just different about it. Yeah. It's also, I guess this kind of comes with women's things in general, but it's more of a trim fit as well. Yeah. Like seeing how it looks on you is definitely a bit more baggy and more just kind of like a loose layer. Yeah. Whereas this one, it is like a trim fit jacket, which like, I like it. Um, and it kind of does suit with the under the helmet scuba hood. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's kind of weird to see the difference in that of just like making the women's a bit tighter. And obviously that's not all it is, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think and that might be in something a little bit different from this version, from the last version, the R1 tech face that I had. I feel like this one's a little bit more baggier, which is mm-hmm. nice. Um, but it's definitely like, I feel like this one's definitely going for more of that outer shell. Like this is a piece that I would I I would ice climb in, I would dry tool in, I would rock climb in. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of a piece that is kind of like a daily piece that I wear that has protection because it is a soft shell. But I feel like just having that like boxier fit is definitely more accommodating for like layers underneath. Like I could put in like my insulated vest under this pretty easily. I know for me, even with this one, wearing like a normal t-shirt underneath it, I have to fix it on the sleeves because it'll kind of like scrunch up and you can see it through, which it's not a big deal, um, but it just kind of goes with the tighter fit of it and yeah. being a trim fit jacket, it just I would layer on top of this more than underneath for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. And I think that's even like a difference of, I guess it's a little note that I've made when I've, whenever I've seen you wear it, it's just like sometimes you'll just wear like either a tank top with it or like even a sports bra with it and Mm -hmm. you just wear it that way where I'm looking at that I'm like oh you've got to have a shirt on but I guess even just the point that you made right now it's like it's uncomfortable it kind of rolls up and then it's just like I don't like I hate that feeling and I Mm -hmm. guess that might be kind of fortunate with this it's just so baggy that doesn't kind of catch anything but that's like I think the weird thing is I think if it were just a soft shell 
you probably wouldn't have that problem of rolling even if it was a trim fit it's because it's got that fleece on the inside that kind of grabs it but at the same time having that fleece it's really comfortable so even just wearing it with the sports bra i'm like ooh, it's cozy yeah i mean that is kind of the nice thing about these tech face and cross strata line of products is just having that fleece on the inside and i know like a lot of companies will just offer a pure soft shell mm. which is nice it's great for kind of like that all-around weather protection it's not really great at anything but it's kind of going to get you through yeah and it's definitely nice to have fleece like i know in the winter time with like dry tooling and ice climbing and the tech face like that little bit of fleece even though it doesn't seem like much just takes the edge off a little bit more and it still remains pretty breathable it's really breathable which is really nice <laughs> but it kind of comes out of flip side because like it's not the best in terms of like wind protection it kind of cuts through a little bit it's going to be better than just like a fleece mm -hmm. but is it going to be better as like a full-on ruggedized soft shell probably not yeah even compared to my like retro pill marsupial mm. fleece this cuts a lot more wind like yeah. i was thinking about that earlier today and it does cut a lot more wind but it's a, it's a soft shell like it, you can't ask it to be something that's not yeah yeah I think that's just and it's like you kind of have to have that mix too because this is kind of like that piece that you are kind of supposed to just leave on and kind mm -hmm. of forget about it and it's supposed to breathe as well as protect which I feel like is a hard balance to hit for sure and I think for the most part these types of jackets do hit the balance mm -hmm. but like I know when it's kind of pushing warmer weather and I just want like a little layer this is almost a little bit too warm yeah. because of the fleece where I just wish I did have something like just a pure soft shell mm -hmm. but it is definitely nice in colder weather like right now it's not too warm this and it is feels, lovely <laughs> it feels really nice to have this on with just like a t-shirt or nothing on underneath exactly yeah and I know at least with this one it does have really good mobility still mm -hmm. with it like even though it's tighter than yours for say like it's when I'm climbing with it I still don't notice it like it's yeah. not like it's restricting arm movement at all because it is still stretchy and it does have mobility with yeah. it I definitely think that's where the soft shell and that's what I guess where I like climbing with these is like it's stretchy but it's also durable you mm -hmm. don't really have to worry about like rubbing against like a ag like aggressive rock and like just like tearing your fleece up where it's yeah. like you still kind of have your cozy fleece but you can kind of rub up against anything and it's not going to tear it to shreds it's yeah. going to hold pretty well which is definitely really nice for sure for sure with all the pockets i am curious to see how this kind of open chest pocket does uh in terms of ice climbing or even dry tooling really i haven't really had a chance to test it in that environment but i could see potentially like ice or snow going into this pocket and like melting and just kind of soaking in a little bit uh obviously i haven't had that experience before but i'm curious to see if that is something that happens or if it is small enough that nothing will go in or nothing substantial at least yeah i mean it is definitely kind of weird like even with that being said it's having that button so like even if they put the button kind of towards the center it would have gave us a, a little bit less of an entry for it's that fully on the side <laughs> yeah like there's kind of a big opening where i guess a lot of things can just kind of plop in yeah i mean it does sit pretty flush and because it is the soft shell material it's not like it's um gonna be a big gaping hole yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of closes on itself a little bit because it is a softer material yeah i guess even kind of with you mentioning the pocket difference it is kind of weird to see both of these models and just see how the fleece patterning is different yes <laughs> like i'm glad you brought that up yeah it's kind of weird because again these are basically the same products it's both i mean everything's the same yeah it it's just different i don't know why they're doing that because you have a zigzag <laughs> patterning which is kind of with patagonia's r1 air obviously mm -hmm. um but the men's r1 tech face is just the traditional squares yeah it's just the traditional grid and i have my zigzags yeah so it's kind of weird to see that they went with different patterning and i don't know why and i don't know why i don't know if they're gonna change it to 
I don't know. Like it's just kind of a random thing. We're like, I, I guess it's not an issue at all. No, it's, it's an interesting choice. It's an interesting <laughs> choice. I mean, they're still both R one, and they both. I feel like it doesn't affect the capabilities of it or anything. No, no, and I wonder too if if it's going to change if the women's R R one cross drive is going to get another update soon. If it's going to get more of like a feature full update, because like mm-hmm. obviously this one and compared to the last one this one got a lot more climbing inspired and it's got like adjustable hoods and all that whereas yours is very much still like an r1 kind of full zip but with a soft shell outer and so it'll be kind of curious to see if things kind of change maybe the men's version is going to get the zigzag patterning because yeah. patagonia does really like their r1 air system and i kind of like it too mm-hmm. it's nice and breathable gotta love breathability then one other thing i'm kind of excited to see how it performs is kind of the pfc free dwrs that are on both of these pieces for sure i know i've been able to get out and do some dry tooling and mixed climbing and a little bit of ice climbing in this and it holds up like again it's just a soft shell so it's not going to be like total hard shell it's going to soak in eventually mm-hmm. But for the most part, it's been beating up and hasn't washed away really fast. And I know that's kind of a problem with DWRs and PFC free DWRs now is that they're kind of, they don't have a long life on them. You have to constantly renew them. But so far, I haven't seen any like bad performance with this DWR. And then the little bit of time that you've been able to use that one, have you kind of noticed anything? Uh, I mean, it for the most part, it beads off. It does soak in a bit. I would say, like, kind of quickly, a little quicker than I expected maybe. But at the same time, like you said, it's not a hard shell. It's not yeah. going to be keeping you super dry the entire time. But it does a good job. And um, it is, it's going to be interesting to see if it kind of stays how it is. Or yeah. if it is going to kind of rapidly decline or, like, be really good, really good, and then just drop off. Yeah, and I'm wondering, if too, if it's going to – I wonder how the soft shell is going to deal with it when it gets dirty. Yeah. I know that's kind of a thing. I think we were climbing, and you kind of rubbed up against something and had, like, dirt or grease or – not grease, but, like – Something on Greasy there. rock. <laughs> yeah. That It was just kind of – Yeah, there. Yeah, <laughs> it was kind of grody, and I'm wondering – if like the soft shell pattern is gonna take that stuff up and it's gonna make the DWR a little bit harder. Yeah. To work. We have washed it since, and the mark is still there. Yeah. So um, I guess more long term things yeah. to see about the jacket, see how they perform, if the performance is still consistent or not. Absolutely. Yeah. Only time will tell. Only time will tell. And if you guys have any questions about these pieces, definitely feel free to leave a comment and we'd be happy to answer them. We're still getting some time with them, but as we learn things, we're happy to share the information. And if you're interested in getting one of these or any products from Patagonia, make sure to use our link in the description and it'll help support the channel.